Here is an amazing question with an unusual twist, which tests your knowledge of the pie charts. You are presented with total spending for the organization, and you need to calculate approximate benefits expense. In addition to benefits expense, you see payroll expense, research and development expense, as well as client entertainment. And your final selection is within one of four possible choices. Choice A, 170,000. Choice B, 216,000. Choice C, 296,000. And choice D, $360,000. Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can do a mental math and come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. First step to solve it is to look at the chart and identify the benefits segment. Benefits represent 27% of all expenses. To calculate the amount for benefits, we need to divide 800,000, which is total expense, by 100 and multiply by 27% because benefits represent 27%, which would be equal 8,000 multiplied by 27, which would be equal 216,000. So the correct choice here is choice B, $216,000. Here is a puzzling question which has a very surprising solution. You are presented with three circles. Each circle is broken into three equal parts. The first circle has numbers 8, 19, and 13. Second circle has numbers 11, 15, and 29. And then the third circle has numbers 33, 31, and then one number is missing. You need to calculate the missing number out of four different choices. Choice A, 16. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 18. And then choice D, 20. Did you calculate the right answer? As I mentioned, the solution to this problem is really interesting. So let's move forward to get to the correct solution together. You're probably tired hearing this and I'm tired repeating it, but you need to always look for patterns to solve these types of problems. And the pattern here is that section 3 of the circle is calculated as sections 1 plus 2 divided by 4. So to calculate the missing number, you need to add 33 plus 31 and then divide the sum by 4 and you will get to the result which would be 16. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tricky question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. This question truly tests your knowledge of English dictionary. You need to form the word using all the letters only once. And there are nine letters that you can see on the screen. The letters are T F A L C U P M I. Give yourself a little bit of time. It's a very complex nine letter word. Consider pausing the video to get to the correct answer. And ready or not, I am going to move forward to get you to the correct solution. As you might have guessed, the correct word is impactful. And the definition of impactful is having a major impact or effect. Sample usage of the word might be during her presentation, she made impactful statements. I get a lot of questions on how to solve these types of challenges. The best way I found is when looking at the letters, try to draw lines connecting the letters and see if you can come up with the word. In this case, letters next to each other in the real world are next to each other also in this test question. So if we connect I M P A C T F U L, you get to the correct solution. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to share in comments so we can all learn. When I saw this question, I couldn't believe the answer. You need to determine how many triangles are presented in the given shape. You see one triangle highlighted in red, but you have four different choices. Choices A, which is eight triangles, choice B, 10 triangles, choice C, 12 triangles, or choice D, 14 triangles. How many do you see? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. As I told you, I was really amazed 
but the correct choice here is choice D, 14 triangles. Let me show them all to you. Here they all are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Did you see them all? Isn't it amazing how many triangles can fit into the simple shape? I learned something, hopefully you did too, and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, I think is an excellent time for you to try your skills to see if you can solve the challenge. You need to determine approximate percentage of Tesla Model S sales in 2023. You are presented with the chart that shows sales by model between period of 2021 and 2024 and you have four different choices. Choice A, 20%, choice B, 27%, choice C, 33%, and then choice D, 40%. Give yourself a little bit of time, do the mental math, maybe pause this video to see if you can get to the correct solution. Once you're ready, please make sure to post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. I love this question because it really makes you think in order to get to the correct solution. You need to determine which shape comes next in the sequence. And you're presented with the series of five shapes. Squares 1, 2, 3 and 5 have other smaller shapes inside. And you need to determine shape 4. You have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C and D. Give yourself a little bit of time, look closely to see if you can get to the correct answer. Are you ready? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. You're probably tired hearing it, but my advice as usual, always look for patterns. And in this case, the pattern is location of the smaller shapes inside the square. You might have noticed that smaller shapes inside the circles are always diamond filled with black and oval with the black outline. This pattern is persistent for shapes 1, 2, 3 and 5. We can safely assume that the square 4 will have similar shapes inside, which automatically exclude choices B and C, only leaving possible choices as A and D. To solve this puzzle and get to the correct solution, we need to detect the second pattern. And second pattern is that oval is always next to the diamond, either to the right of the diamond or on top of the diamond. Based on this information, the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. But in case you need more problems with solutions, please make sure to check out the description of this video. Here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with 10 letters and you need to form the words from English dictionary using all the letters only once. The letters are L, E, P, M, O, C, Y, T, I, X. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time because there are 10 letters. Let me give you a hint. The word somehow represents the fact that there are 10 letters. Hopefully you found the answer. Please make sure to post it in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is the frequently used question to test how logical are you. You need to determine if conclusion is correct based on the statements. Let's look at the statement. All soccer players are sports persons and all sports persons are fit. Conclusion. Some soccer players are not fit and you need to determine if this particular conclusion is correct. You have four different choices to determine if conclusion is accurate. Choice A. It's reasonably correct. Choice B. It is correct. Choice C. It's incorrect. And choice D. Cannot be determined based on the information available. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video and take another look at the statements and at the question itself. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution. As you might be well aware, in logical world, there is a formula. If A equals B and B equals C, 
then you can reasonably conclude that A equals C as well. We can look at our original statements as A, B and C. For example, the statement all soccer players are sports persons could be an equivalent of A equal B and then all sports persons are fit could be B equal C. Based on these two statements, we can reasonably say that A equals C, which would mean that all soccer players are fit. Our question though asks us if some soccer players are not fit. Do you think it is correct? Based on the information provided, it is not correct. So the correct choice here is choice C incorrect. Because the correct answer based on the information we have is all soccer players are fit. Do you have a better way to solve this question? Please make sure to share in comments. And if you're trying to get ready for the test and need additional questions to practice, please make sure to check out additional materials in the description section of this video. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's an interesting challenge where you need to determine the relationship between family members. I mean, is Bosca's sister. Catherine is Bosca's mother. Dan is Catherine's father. And Alan is Dan's mother. You need to determine how Amin is related to Dan. And you have four different choices. Choice A, grandfather. Choice B, grandmother. Choice C, daughter. And choice D, granddaughter. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can navigate in this puzzle and get to the correct solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward, reveal the answer to you and explain how I got to the solution. And as usual, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. The easiest way to determine this multi-generational relationship in the family is to build a diagram. Let's do it one step at a time. I mean, is Baska's sister. Catherine is Baska's mother. Dan is Catherine's father. And Ellen is Dan's mother. Now let's look at the conclusions we can draw from this diagram. I mean, and Baska are Catherine's children. Since Dan is Catherine's father, I mean, and Baska are Dan's grandkids. Which means that I mean is Dan's granddaughter. So the correct choice here is choice D, granddaughter. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to diagram and solve similar problems on the test. Here's one of my favorite questions where you need to do mental math calculations. You're presented with the group of four numbers. And this group has an average of 24. The first three numbers are 16, 22 and 34. You need to calculate the value of the missing number, which is represented as the question mark and you have four different choices. Choice A, 24. Choice B, 26. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 21. Can you do the math? Did you find the answer? Let's move forward so we can get to the correct solution together. Obviously, to solve it, you can plug in one of the four solutions instead of the missing number, calculate the average to see which one is correct. But we're gonna take the different route. In the first step, we're going to calculate the sum of three existing numbers. 16 plus 24 plus 34 equals 72. In the next step, we need to determine what would be the sum of four numbers for which average would be 24. To do this, we need to multiply 24 by 4 and the end result of this would be 96. And in the last step, we need to subtract the sum of three numbers from the total where the average will be 24 to calculate the fourth number. 96 minus 72 equals 24. Let's verify this. 16 plus 24 plus 34 plus missing number 24 divided by 4 equals 96 divided by 4 equals 24. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now, here's the question for you to try your skills. You need to determine how many triangles are shown on the screen. You have four different choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 12. And choice D, 14. Feel free to pause this video 
to calculate the right answer. And make sure to post your solution in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is an interesting question where you present it with the set of numbers and you need to determine which number is not a prime number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 31. Choice B, 61. Choice C, 71. And choice D, 91. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe recall the definition of prime numbers and see if you can come up with the solution. Did you solve it? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's start with the definition of prime number. Prime numbers cannot be divided by any number other than one and number itself without leaving a remainder. Some examples of prime numbers would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and you can continue the chain. The opposite of prime numbers are composite numbers, and examples of those would be 4, could be divided by 2, 6, could be divided by 2 and 3, 8, which could be divided by 2 and 4, 9, 10, and you can continue the sequence. As you might have figured out, out of the numbers presented, 91 can be divisible by 7. So, 91 is not a prime number, which means that the correct solution is choice D. 91. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence. And you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.